Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the CQS New City High Yield Fund Limited Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and will publish those responses where it's appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet company platform. And before we begin, I would just like to submit the following poll. And if you'd give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I would now like to hand you over to Franco Francis, Senior Fund Manager. Franco, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And thank you, everybody, for uh, coming in to listen to uh, the old fella. Um, I hope you know, hopefully some of you are investors and <clears throat> those that aren't, I hope I can explain to you, um, you know, why it's, it, it's, it's a, a fairly sensible place for, you know, some of your income money to be invested. Right. I will, uh, move on to, you know, our sort of major company, which owns us, which is CQS, um, CQS before I go any further this is in the process of being taken over by Manulife, um, the large Canadian insurance company, um, because they were you know, looking for um, an alternative credit manager who was um, you know, head and shoulders ab above the rest. And uh, unfortunately, um, throughout the team at CQS, we have some exceedingly good people in you know, all of the uh, sectors on the screen. Um, that is in the process and very, very close to closing, but um, no doubt there will be an announcement as and when that does. As regards New City, does it have any effect on the way we manage the funds? No, we will still manage them exactly the same way we have done before. Um, but the difference is now you know, we will have access to you know, more um, information via you know, Manulife and all of their stuff in the Canada, US and the Far East, which is uh, certainly going to be of use. Um, right. Now, the fund currently is uh, around total assets under management of about 290, actually 295 yesterday. Um, Jersey domiciled, London listed, therefore we don't have to pay stamp duty, which always helps. Um, my main aim is to provide investors with a high dividend yield potential for capital growth um, and the ability to sleep at night because at the end of the day when you're paying out a yield of around uh, what's well, nine nine percent on the screen it's with the share price at the moment it's around 8.8 .8. um, you know obviously there are you know it is a higher risk strategy and you know, that is what you pay me for to make sure that I mitigate those risks by investing sensibly and um, sizing risks accordingly. Right, let's move on to the next page. Right, this is yeah, this is all backward-looking stuff, but um, you know, the, the period ending December when the results were taken was a, a pretty good six months for the first six months of the year. Um, NAV performed well. Uh, you know, that was really because um, a lot of the financials that were hit post um, Credit Suisse the previous year in sort of February you know, came back. And also we had bids for uh, Co-op Bank and very latterly um, you know, post the end of the December for, you know, for, for Virgin Money, which is you know, further pushed it on from this this price here. Um, you know, obviously, you know, share price return was you know, slightly better because people you know, always chase dividends towards the end of um, the year and uh, you know, force it up. But uh, you know, that's all very, very good. Share price premium as of December is three and a half percent, and it is now up to five and a half percent, which is more where it has traded historically. Um, as people, you know, are happy to pay this premium, you know, to, to get the certainty of income, and um, you know, part of you know the certainty of income is shown on this page. 
um, you know, in the year 2023, you know, we, we were able to put more money back into the reserves, which I say we've got three pence or just over three pence per share of reserves there. That allows um, us, as we did in a couple of years previously, to use those reserves, you know, when, you know, income doesn't quite hit the target. Um, but, you know, it's going to take a lot of years um, not hitting the target um, to use up that re re reserve um, portion there. So, you know, what we've got is a, you know, a firm dividend base, which, you know, we would look to, um, you know, continue as we are at the moment. Uh, you know, if it's possible to increase this by a small amount at the end of the year, yes, we do, um, because you know we are aware that investors are, to be fair, my demographic and older. We all like have that dividend check hitting the um, sort of sort of mat, you know, four times a year, and uh, you know it, it is. Yeah, a, a very pleasant amount. It, 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 even better if you hold it in an ISA or a SIP, where you, where you take it gross. Uh, this is just giving you again back pressure. But it, it gives you the sort of you know overall return. You know, since I took this over in August two thousand and seven, um, you know, obviously the, the the major blips you know was was twenty twenty like everybody else. Um, you know, the, the discount, I believe, went to about 38 or 40 percent for a couple of days because um, market makers, you know, just you know, had a deluge of small sellers and they and they couldn't you know, couldn't place it, didn't have the books to um, you know, take them on board. And you know, a few fortunate investors did manage to buy very, very nicely. Um, you know, over that period. But, you know, as you can see, we rallied back strongly and we, you know, we have continued on, you know, what is a you know, fairly straight trajectory. You know, it, it is what, you know, th that is what we wish to continue to do, you know, all markets permitting. Um, the, the investment process is fairly simple. You know, daily you know, we have got a, say a team within CQS of 20 plus credit analysts. We have um, probably about 15 or so uh, fund managers who I can talk to who do different sectors, CLOs, ABS, um, high yield specialists, financial specialists, and obviously convertibles as well, which um, unfortunately we don't have, you know, much opportunity there because of the yields are too low, but it's a very useful um, area of the market to gauge. For, certainly for me, who having done convertibles for many years, you know, you know when certain companies are issuing, um, it's either because they can't issue any more equity, or they can't issue debt because it's the cheapest way of doing it. But um, anyway, we, we monitor this daily. Um, I get, you know emails from analysts saying franco have you looked at this one i think it's you know in, in your zone you know i'm happy with it you know what do you think or alternatively i'll see something which i've searched on bloomberg you know it might not be a company i know too well i'll go to the analyst and say you know do you cover this one what do you think if they don't cover it they will know somebody who does or you know you know we do you know, use um, you know small boutique brokers as well as you know the, the sort of major players because the, the small, to be fair, the small boutique guys they uh, have not forgotten the fact that we're all a service industry, and um, you know by looking after your you know fund manager he, he's looking after his investors and, and therefore everybody you know, has a benefit but um daily monitoring um obviously from the yield now sometimes you will have um something's got a high running yield but it's trading over par 
and it's a matter of when that pull to par brings down the redemption yield. And you know, the answer is if you've got a redemption yield less than we're paying out, then there isn't, there's no point in investing in it. Um, it is, uh, you know, you, you then become an annuity. This is not an annuity fund. This is a fund to hold your capital or you know, increase it where we can. As I said, you know, we do use you know, CQS platforms and independent broker verification, which is very important, um, you know, because especially, you know, we might be a little more bearish on a company and then we you know, talk to a broker and they say, yeah, but have you thought about this angle? And it just gives us something else to th think about. I mean, the, the more brains putting into my, um, you know, thought process, the better. You know, it's, I just, you know, you, you take in everything, even when you're walking down the street, you, you, you've got to you know, look for what's happening around you it's it's, it's, a, it's a very similar thing um and then you know when we decide whether we want to be in a company or not then we've got to work out you know what's the best sizing for this um position to take um what's the risk if it goes wrong what's the chance of getting out um you know obviously a lot of the stuff we look at is more niche than some of the bigger players because they can't um, get involved in um, you know, some of the smaller issues because they'd have to have the whole issue in their portfolio, and you know, it wouldn't still then wouldn't have any use to them. So you know, that is an advantage we have. Obviously, liquidity can be a problem, but you know we, when we are buying something, we're buying to hold it to redemption. We're not buying it to trade it. Um, you know if. It, it, you know, the answer is you only get income if you hold something for a you know, period of time um, and, uh, you know, you're get, not giving away the, the dealing spread every time you transfer something. We, we could probably get more bonds called from us by the company at their call dates than we do just sell them. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's covered that. And, yeah, you know, Ongoing portfolio monitoring and rebalancing, yes, that's there. And obviously, yes, there's very strict um, compliance to risk limits because, you know, if, 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 if you're not in looking at that, you know, front and centre, then you could get yourself into trouble having, you know, you have you know, basic limits for, you know, sector, uh, company, and our um, lender, uh, Scotiabank, you know, only allows us to have so much in you know, certain sectors. So, you know, we, we are, you know, very cautious on risk and we have some very good risk managers at CQS. And positioning. Um, you know, the, the, the figures there show, you know, June 23 and December 23. Um, you know, financials are a big part of our um investment thesis purely because you know uk banks um have some of the strongest balance sheets and their various t at1 and uh, tier two paper has been giving you know exceedingly good yields um and as i mentioned earlier you know the takeover of co-op bank where we I can give that as an example. We held the nine and a halves. It was our biggest holding. Um, and they had to refinance. And we ended up with um, a rather nice um, you know, 11 and a half coupon. So that was good. And it was trading at around 102, 103. Uh, along comes uh, Coventry Building Society looking to take it, taking them out. And the next next stop is 115. Um, our analyst Christian Lucas, who is really hot on these matters, reckoned that you know if this was Coventry Building Society paper, it'd be trading at 120. So although it's a long way over par, there's still more to go, and it's still giving us a very good yield. Um, energy, you know, yes, we do um, 
some of that is green energy um, in the form of aggregated mi micro power, which is um, biomass um, boilers for you know, various large um, you know, companies and um, schools and all the rest of that stuff. Industrials, yeah, I mean, there's you know, a fair amount of, you know, we have got something there which is called mangrove which is a heat exchange business um and that you know is based in germany but uh you know you can, sterling piece of paper so we end up with a you know something that is very good for going going forward in green energy um and uh you know yes we do still have emp emp we mostly are in North Sea because of the strict regulation there, and uh, you know more in gas than oil as it's um, more of a transition. Uh, but you know elsewhere, you know th those are our major bets. And let's go on. And yes, you know obviously the split currently it's showing that on the eighty four fifteen point six that was at. As at um, close of business in end of February, um, fifteen point six percent does include preference shares. Um, so if it's just pure equity, it would probably be about sort of thirteen and a half. But um, you know, you know what, one thing that is also I think it's on it's on the next one. No, it's not. Sorry, I go back to there. It, currencies. Uh, are very important um, because you know if you believe a currency is going to be performing better than uh, sterling, which has been um, definitely the case over you know quite a long period when I've been running this fund, then you know you increase your um, exposure to the U.S. dollar and the euro. Currently, um, we're actually seventy-two percent in GBP. 15% in dollars and 11 in euros um, and a few scraps in the um, Scandinavian currencies. Now, again, just looking back, when we were coming up to Brexit, we did increase our dollar exposure. And soon after, um, again, we, you know, we, we sort of cut it down when it you know, certainly had a bit of a bad time. And obviously, over the Liz Truss sort of minor, um, sort of time-wise, it was a very minor percentage of the time, but it was a very big move. Um, we did actually sell some of our dollar portfolio after sterling had fallen um, down. I think we got out at one eleven for about three percent of our portfolio, which. You know, we put back into sterling. So subsequently, we're now up at sort of 126. Um, you know, that helps you on both income and capital. You know, that, you know, hedging is not something that um, I like to do because it costs. And um, you know, the, the, the trouble being, um, you know, all I have to do is look at a company if i don't like the company and i don't like the currency then i can sell it no problem but if, if you're hedging you've then got an, another thing to look at and i just think keep it simple it's worked so far and you know let's keep um doing what we know best rather than uh, trying to be clever because you know hedging can be very expensive as many companies will be able to tell you now this is showing you the, the current top 10 co-op bank which i've just mentioned it's still yielding as i said 10 percent with, with that lovely coupon um galaxy finco which is uh, domestic in general the um domestic insurance of white goods and they're now doing more actually servicing of white goods and stuff like that so again 9.6 shawbrook you know that's a, a very high yielder that has also you know recovered quite a bit um that that's a 12 and 12 point whatever 
percent year uh, running yield on that one. It's showing thirty. I think it's just moved up a bit since there. Um, Virgin Money on the back of the the, sort of the bid for them is up to eight point two percent yield, having been at about nine and a half. So again, you know, it's one of the ones that it's still doing it's a a job, but you know, again, you know, when nationwide have it, um, it will probably come down to a yield under eight, at which point it will be you know, a source of funds for us to invest elsewhere. Um, aggregated micro power, um, it just you know has been ticking along very nicely, and you know, gives us a bit of diversity in the portfolio. TVL Finance is Travel Lodge. Um, that has done us exceedingly well, 10 and a quarter coupon, um, trading around 105 at the moment, um, and we're into that mostly um, below par and did buy some more um, earlier this year, um, just above par. RL Finance is Royal London. Again, another um, high-yield piece of paper issued to last year and again this one's trading about 107 but still got a yield of 9.2 and you know we're not near to the call so you know we're happy to run that one barclays yeah that's you know just around par performing nicely stonegate is obviously going to get you know in the in focus for the next few months because that um We'll be looking to refinance because it's 31st of July 25 that um, bond, and uh, you know one would expect you know that that, um, that will be you know when there's about in the next two or three months that's when I'd be refinancing that, and the one equity here is Frontline, um, which is a tanker business. Um, it's a Fredrickson business. It was the the business that. Um, Tried to take over Euronav, but failed. Um, we used to hold Euronav, um, but um, switched into Frontline at the latter half of last year um, at around, I think, about 16 to $17. It's now trading at about $22. We did um, sell a bit slightly above where we are now because of the good performance, but, you know, to say it is an equity that's given us good equity performance and it's giving us um you know good um a dividend yield there of 9.2 it could actually be better than that depending on where vlcc rates go but uh you know that, that that's the you know the top 10 uh yes and here's just showing you the sort of the average sort of premium and you obviously see you know, the appearance, you know, when uh, prices or whatever, it, it sort of goes down. It just, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, in, in normal trading without um, you know, people putting in funny prices, 5% is a you know, pretty good premium. And, um, you know, I think it's very important for me to say that when we issue we look to issue over five percent because we're very aware, aware that um, investors have paid this premium, and they would not be happy with me if I was saying to our brokers, "Oh, look, I can, I can, I want to issue another ten million shares. Um, I'll just do them at any premium. It's, it's just, it's just not on. It has to be at five, and I've made it very clear in the past what the reasons are. We are priced." On the portfolio at the bid end of the market so if you sort of say you know the average spread of bonds is you know one one and a half percent you know some of the ones are larger so let's say one and a half percent okay so that's you're already down to sort of you know, 3.6 then um you, you've got to pay the fee to the broker which is 0.75 percent you know, you're down to sort of, you know, the high twos. Um, and if you get much below that, then you're not adding to existing investors' um, value. Plus, 
it doesn't take um, a rocket scientist to realize that every you know share that we issue um, actually dilutes the reserves and um, as I said the reserves are very important to maintain the income you know in the future um, you know I, I would be very happy um, for those reserves to go up um, over a period of time and um, you know it just allows you the flexibility and peace of mind um, when you're you know, when I'm advising the board you know where you know we think the dividend should be um, sector themes well, I think I've really covered this I mean we, banks still very very happy um, you know diversity of the you know we, we do try and you know find you know different opportunities and we do tend to find them you know more in Scandinavia because you know there are some you know small businesses in Sweden and Norway that are interesting um and you know things like the green food group you know also help us um for the you know the ESG rating on on the fund um but you know, you know, we do try to, um, you know, diversify as much as possible because, you know, you, you cut the risk. Um, energy transition, mangrove, as I've mentioned that, agrate and mitre, I mentioned that. Now, REA is a palm oil uh, producer in uh, Indonesia. It is a very, very good business. It, it's, um, it has what? I think one of the top five uh, spot ratings, which is um, sustainable palm oil um, sort of credentials you know, in the world. Uh, they have orangutan um, sort of reserves you know, you know, when they find them. So it's you know, they do try exceedingly hard you know, and – you know, they have been through difficult times when they had to um, cease paying the preference dividend. But as it was a um, part, not participating, a, 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 a um, part, it, it basically you um, you get the re, the income at a later date, and we're getting you know the seven points of accrued interest, which they've been waiting to pay for about two years, and that's coming out in April, about the 15th. So we, we, we're getting a good bit of income in from there. Um, they have sold a chunk of their business um, to a, a, you know, a local um, large palm oil company. And you know, that will allow them to repay the eight and three quarter bond in 2025. And, you know, one interesting point of that is, that it doesn't re repay at 100, it, re it repays at 104. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that has still got some upside for it. But um, and there we go. I mean, it, you can you can look at the appendices yourselves, but, um, you know, I think there's going to be um, quite a few questions and uh, far away with the questions please perfect franco that's great thank you very much indeed for your presentation this afternoon um ladies and gentlemen please do continue to submit your questions just by using the q a tab that's situated on the right hand corner of your screen uh, but just while the company takes a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already i would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published q a can be accessed via your investor dashboard um franco we have received a number of questions um throughout your presentation this afternoon and thank you to all of those on the call for taking the time Time, um, to submit their questions and Franco perhaps if we if we dive straight into it um, the first question that we have here reads as follows you have an awfully large holding uh, in the co-op bank 11.75 percent uh, they're in the process of staff redundancies uh, to save money and rumors of mergers abound how confident are you that the holding is a safe and solid one yeah I mean, I'm very confident um, yeah I, I believe that the you know this is basically um the, the company is if you like 
preempting what um, Coventry will do when they take them over as regards to redundancies. They're looking at um, you know, opportunities to, you know, you know get, get good PR once once the deal's done. Um, but yes, I mean, it is a it is a tier two piece of paper. It, it is higher quality than the AT ones. We're certainly very you know, very happy with that one. Perfect. Um, just turning to the next question that we have here. Um, you successfully issued new shares at a premium. Uh, can you discuss how these funds are being deployed uh, to support your strategy and what this indicates about investor confidence in the company's future? Right. First of all, you know, I think I've mentioned how much, you know, why we issue at the premium we do. Um, and the, the brokers to the company will tell you that... Um, you know, sometimes they will come on, you know, we've got buyers, you know, can you issue? And unless I have got um, investments that I can put the money into that I, I, you know, we've, you know, given the process, you know, are on the list to buy or add to, um, you know, we won't issue. Um, but, um, you yeah. I'm I'm happy to issue the way we do as a sort of a dripping tap rather than, uh, you know, suddenly sort of come in and say, right, I want to issue, um, for example, you know, sort of 25, 30 percent more shares now, because at the end of the day, the market's going to see you coming when you come to buy the bonds and you're not going to not, not going to have done a very good job for your existing investors. You know, I am here, as I say, I personally hold just over 608,000 um, shares in this fund, um, which is added to every month in my ISA. Um, and when the dividends come up in the ISA, they, they're reinvested as well. So, you know, I'm with you. Um, but, you know, I'm certainly you know, very happy with that way of issuing. Um, and you know, what it does, it sort of, it stops us going to a 10% premium when, uh, which we have done occasionally in the past. Um, and you know, I will only issue when it's, you know, it, it is right for the fund. I mean, for example, I do not issue shares um, for at least a month before the XD date, purely because you're not going to get any income on the shares you issue and you effectively bite into those reserves straight away. So, um, you know, that, that's also, you know, you know, part of the decision making. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions regarding uh, dividends. If we take these together, perhaps um, the first one is given the modest decline in revenue earnings per share and the maintained dividend rate. Uh, what measures are you taking to ensure the sustainability of the dividend payments, especially in the context of potential interest rate cuts? Um, and the second question is, should dividend cover improve? Right. Um, dividend cover, I am happy with as it is. Um, I mean, you know, short, short term, um, you, in the first half of the year, the, the income was less, but this would be made up, um, as I said, by the REA preference share paying its arrears in the second half. Um, and I would expect, um, that we would have, um, a small surplus again this year you know, and, and, and unless anything untoward happens, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't predict the future. I just try to sort of keep us in, in the, you know, the right direction. And, uh, you know, you will have situations where something comes along that is, you know, very, very left field. Um, and you have to just, you know, get on with it and um you know you, you do you, you do what you can next question i think perfect um the next question that we have here asks did we lose much through having money in russia uh, thinking about raven property yes we did um we lost whatever the holding was um let's have a look i've got it here somewhere 
Um, no, I shouldn't be here. I must have got my valuation, which I haven't. Uh, but it, 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 you know, the, and that was obviously twenty twenty two. You know it, and you know we, we wrote it straight down to zero, and um, you know it didn't hit hit, you know, hit, hit us too badly. Um, you know you. you you know, nobody at the time thought, you know, especially the guys at Raven Russia, that it was going to, um, you know, get get involved in a war. But um, as far as I know, the business has been transferred into Cypria ownership, and um, you know, is still going strong. But it's a matter of whether or not we get any money out of it is another matter, depending on you know what is going on in Ukraine. I mean, at the same point, I will, you know, you know politics is you know, one of the risks going forward. Um, you know, politicians make some very odd decisions. Um, last year, I will also mention we had a very small amount of uh, investment in Credit Suisse bonds. I mean, a lot of you know, it was the you know the biggest bank bonds in Europe, and we only had. Um, a nominal of two million, which was which actually cost us one million pounds. But you know we don't like losing money. But w w when somebody moves the goalpost, not only the goalpost, but they move the whole football pitch, then you know you, you cannot um, you know allow for that. Um, you know nobody saw it coming, and it, I believe that Pimco is. Uh, you know, leading the charge against um, you know, the Swiss government, you know, to get um, reparation for you know, what was a um, really weird decision. Perfect, thank you. Um, we have two questions here, which are similar in theme. So perhaps again, if we could just merge these together. Um, hi, is there a team working with you managing the trust? Um, is there a succession plan in place? Um, and the second question, which is similar, says. Can you say something about your team and fund manager support? Right. Um, fund manager support, I have um, uh, Darren Toner, who is um, one of our credit multi-asset fund managers specialising in high yield. Um, a very senior guy that, should I get run over by a bus, could be able to walk into this fund and manage it very easily. We have two more junior fund managers working with him one on high yield ryan bailey who is um performing exceedingly well and uh you know i, I speak to him on a daily basis um you know find, find out what's going on in europe and um elsewhere now this is obviously ultra high yield so it's at you know, the top end of um you know where they're looking but it, you know it, it, it works both ways. He's showing me what's going on at the lower end, either the four and a half to five percent level, and then we, you know, it allows me to sort of make decisions on what's going up higher up. And he is learning from me on that. And on the financials, I have um, a slightly older fund manager called Lawrence Meets. He's still you know, relatively young compared to me at sixty six, but um, he, he is a top performing financials um, fund manager. Uh, I rate him very highly. Um, our positions in AT1 stocks are, in, certainly in the Sterling ones, are very similar. Uh, we have you know, we are on a similar thought basis, so you know, that is you know, also very very good. And I speak to him on a you know, daily basis, so you know, that's all good. And obviously, we have got you know support elsewhere from all of the um, analysts and you know, different sect of um, uh, fund managers you know, sh should we need to. I mean, I sit next to um, a very like-minded fund manager who runs our convertible um, division, James Peaty. Um, he has been around not quite as long as me, but um, he was also in the UK convertible market for many years. So, you know, it, it, he's also, yeah, very useful when it comes to input on you know 
you know where things are moving equities relevance to bonds because i think you know that sector in particular um allows you to balance best right um next question please absolutely the next question that we've got here um what are your long-term views on two sisters and boparan why are you downsizing your position right very good question i think the company survives um I believed it was going to survive even when the bonds got down to 65 um, and I you know, did add up somewhat lower levels to some of the, the holding. Why am I downsizing? They have recovered to the low to mid 90s and the yield is you know not what I can get elsewhere. And you know, my, my view is that I can you know, get um, a higher yield. Um, in slightly better quality companies, you know, and um, as I say, Boparan has done its job. I mean, it's, it, it, uh, compared to a lot of um, other bonds, it's, it, it, it's when something's done as well as it has over the last six months, you have to look and think, okay, if they have another hard time, something else comes out, more bird flu in the in the in the next winter. Um, you know, there the could be um, you know, sort of negative um, PR just when you're coming into refinancing that bond. So it is you know, a prudent thing to downsize the position. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the next question says, thank you for your time today. What are your views on inflation going forward? And specifically, do you think about uh, what do you think about achieving at least an inflationary increase each year? And I believe that's um, regarding the dividend increase. Uh, well, we, obviously, you know, dividend increases are, um, you know, that they are small because we, you know, we're a fixed income fund. Um, you know, even when yields are going up, you know, you know, effectively, if yields are going up, bond prices are going down. Therefore, um, you know, you're give, you you can be losing capital. But you know, we try to increase the dividend by a small amount each year. Um, it, it is really, you know, when you're yielding as much as we are, um, I think investors are very very happy that you know you can hold it. And you know, just add to it sm in a small amount. Perfect. The next question that we've got here asks: uh, Will you consider high yielders such as PPDS, PIBS, uh, REITs, and alternatives such as infrastructure and investment trusts on large discounts and high yields, which could be the subject of uh, continuation uh, votes? Very sensible question. Yes, I, I do have some REITs in the portfolio. Not that many. I have New River. I have Palace Capital um, and Regional REIT, um, you know, which have not performed stunningly, but um, you know, I, I believe that the, you know, the management will um, get it right. Um, you know, trusts on um, large discounts. We do have a small investment in hypnosis, which is um, going through all sorts of um, interesting uh, machinations at the moment um we, we didn't get involved with hypnosis when it issued or went flying up to the 120s um we got involved um after a long while um down at um the, the, the low 80s and sort of the 81 82 level obviously you know it's not looking great at the moment because it's, it's down below that but you know the NAV is still well above this level, and you know we look forward to getting out um, sometime in the future. But um, I feel very sorry for the people that uh, were sort of put in at the, the higher one twenties. Perfect, thank you. Um, Raven is moving to Dubai. I understand uh, that means it should be easier to transfer funds back to the UK. Um, is that the case? Allegedly. You know, we, we we've got. A, we, I'm waiting to hear more back from the company. Um, you know, we are on their um, mail list as a you know bondholder. Um, just really, you know, we just wait to hear. You know, we are in no greater position than anybody else to find out. But yes, 
Dubai would be a, a you know, very pleasant place for you know, given the amount of Russians that are there already. Perfect. And just a couple of final questions that we've got here. Um, do you have an exposure to Altis? No, Altis, I do not. Um, I've kept well clear of that one. Thank heavens. Um, and I've just seen the last question. Do we take a holding in the IPF bond at 12%? No, we didn't. Um, IPF is not something I've particularly liked over, over time. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that, you know, I would rather have, you know, any sort of funds in something like co-op or Virgin money or even Shawbrook rather than IPF is it's, it's not, um, in my opinion, a particularly well run business. Perfect, Franco. And that actually concludes all of the questions that were submitted from investors. So thank you very much indeed for being so generous of your time then addressing all of those. Um, but Franco, perhaps before really just looking to redirect those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments to wrap up with, that'd be great. Yeah, well, first of all, I thank everybody for taking the time to listen to me because um, I don't do these things that often. Um, you know, I, I tend to sort of focus on the day job and you know all i can say is i i enjoy doing this job um looking after you know, the funds is, is actually an honor um and uh you know I, I love the fact that you know you know we have continued to outperform i mean it's it, it, it's what you know gets me up in the morning um you know as i say at 66 I, i'm now actually receiving my state pension as well whoopie do but um you know, the, the brain feels like it's an awful lot younger. Unfortunately, the body's holding up as well. So, um, you know, I, I hope to be, uh, you know, continuing for um, some time yet. But um, when I do finally um, hang up the dealing boots, you know, the team that is in place um, are certainly probably brighter than me and, uh, you know, probably you know, more technically... Um, minded but um you know just thank you all for you know those who are your investors i appreciate your trust and those of you who aren't i'll be very happy you know to you know, field any questions at any time Perfect, Franco, that's great. And thank you once again for updating investors this afternoon. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in all that the management team can really better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of CQS New City High Yield Fund Limited, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good afternoon to you all.